This is part 3 of the HO scale Athen Bombardier cap car DCC install. This will be the last part where I go over fitting the LEDs into the shell of the cap car and then putting the cap car back together to finish the installation. Take the shell of the cap car and the first thing we're going to do is remove the lenses on the front. You can do this with a pin or the sharp point of an X-Acto blade. Gently push on each lens from the inside of the shell and they should slowly slide out. When they have come out far enough, you can pull the lens out of the housing with some tweezers. Do this for all six lenses of the cab car. And make sure you keep these lenses in a safe place because they are tiny and it's very easy to lose them. After the lenses are out, you may want to use a 0.8mm drill bit and pin vise to run through the holes just to make sure that they're not blocked. For my cap car in particular, the light holes were not drilled all the way through, so I actually had to open the holes for the lights just a little bit. And then you wanna take a small brush to remove the plastic shavings out of the inside of the shell. After you have drilled out the holes, it's time to run the LEDs through them. You can run the wires of the LEDs through the diaphragm spring inside of the cap car to help keep them in place and then insert each LED through the corresponding hole in the shell. Put a small drop of cyanoacrylic glue onto the LED and then attach the lens onto the LED. You want to make sure the alignment is perfect because the lights will not look as good if they're off center or if worse, they will not fit back into the hole of the light housing if you don't install them correctly. You need really steady hands and a lot of patience for this part. I recommend using a head mounted magnifying device to help you avoid eye strain. When the lens is firmly glued onto the LED, pull the wires back and push the lens back into the hole of the shell. If your LED was dead center, then it should go back in fairly easily. Push the lens all the way in with your finger and then brush some Aline's tacky glue on the inside of the shell where the LED is. I use the tacky glue because it's easy to remove it in the future if one of the LEDs burn out compared to cyanoacrylic glue which is almost permanent once it's set. Once you have done all six of the lights, you can connect the lights to the decoder again and test out how the lights look. This is what mine looks like. You can also brush the interior with some black paint to help prevent light leakage on the inside. Once the lights are good to go, disconnect them from the decoder and then use the reverse action tweezers to hold all of the wire strands together and then tape them to the roof of the car. This helps prevent the wires from flying all over the place. You can also twist the wires together for several turns so that they stay relatively close together. Put the shell of the cab car away because it's time to work on the chassis again. The first thing I did here was to cut a small notch onto the second floor of the interior just in front of the seats on the left side and then I run the female plug of the chassis through the staircase of the car and then up through the notch. Finally, using some double-sided foam tape, I secured a female plug to the second floor. I then used the same foam tape to secure the 21-pin adapter and decoder to the ceiling of the first floor. I also do the same for the speaker. If there are any other wires dangling around at this point, you can use more tape to hold them in place so that they are not visible through the windows. Here is what my finished chassis looks like. Plug the male plug of the shell into the female plug of the chassis and make sure the orientation of the plugs is correct. Then you can turn the chassis over and drop it into the shell of the car. Make sure that you don't pinch any of the small wires in the process. What I like to do is insert the cab end of the car into the shell first and then slide it slowly towards the end in place. The last thing to do is to install the couplers and the coupler cover plates back in place. You may need to take off the trucks again so that it's easier to install the couplers. Here are the two cap cars that I have. They are Go Transit 200 and 204. 204 on the right is my first cab car, which was fitted with a Soundtrack Tsunami sound card decoder. 200 on the left is the cab car that I just finished, 
which has an ESU Loxon Select decoder. Everything about these two cab cars are the same, with the exception for the decoders that were used. I am going to do a sound comparison between the Tsunami and the Loxon decoders. First up, we have the Tsunami decoder. And here is the low sound decoder. I think the ESU Low Sound Decoder has much better sound quality than the Tsunami. The Tsunami is only available with the Nathan K5LA horn. Uh, for the ESU Decoder, I use the Nathan K5LL, which is actually what the real Go Transit 200 has. Uh, it's a much deeper sounding horn than the Nathan K5LA. Depending on which cab car you have, the horn sounds will be different. And if you have an ESU Low Sound Select Decoder, you can change the horn sound to match the prototype. This wraps up the DCC installation tutorial for the HO Scale Athen Bombardier cap car. Thanks for watching. Hit like on the video if you found it helpful. Leave a comment if you have questions or concerns. And subscribe to my channel for more content in the future. See you next time.